Anil Kumar and now it is time to review domain and range of functions. Here we have four different functions. I'd like you to pause the video and find out domain and range of these functions. So the question here is determine domain and range of the following functions. The first one is square root of x minus 1 divided by 2. Then we have y equals to square root of 36 minus x squared. We have absolute function y equals to 1 minus 3 times absolute value of x minus 2. And this one is a reciprocal function y equals to minus 1 minus 2 over x minus 3. So you can pause the video, write down domain and range of these functions and then we'll move on to the next question. Now how to find domain and range? Whenever you have square root, then within the square root we should have non-negative value. So that is to say that to find domain we have to say that x minus 1 over 2 should be greater than or equal to 0. Remember it could be equal to 0. That means x minus 1 should be greater than or equal to multiply both sides by 2 so you get 0, right? Anything times 0 is 0 and that gives us the domain so we can write down that the domain of the function I'm writing in short is x belongs to real numbers so normally this is the long way x belongs to real numbers where x is greater than or equal to 1 correct so I bring this 1 to the right side so I get domain as x is greater than or equal to 1 as far as the range is concerned we know for a reciprocal function uh, they are always positive right so so y belongs to real numbers where y is greater than or equal to 0. They are also non-negative, correct? So that is how we can write domain and range of the first function. Now the second function is kind of a semicircle, right? So at times we can also sketch a function to get clear idea about domain and range. So here uh, it's kind of a function like this where if I substitute x equals to 0, I get square root of 36 that means this value is 6 and uh, if I want to equate y to 0 then that means x square should be 36 or it could be minus 6 or plus 6. Now from this kind of a sketch you can easily find domain and range. The other way of course is the same method which we applied here. So you could also say that for this particular function 36 minus x square should be greater than or equal to 0 or 36 should be greater than or equal to x square right so that means when you square root it then x is greater than minus 6 and is less than plus 6 right so x is between plus and minus 6 you could do like that as far as the range is concerned we can substitute these values and figure it out so we get domain here as uh, as domain as uh, we could write in the form of inequality where x is greater than equal to I should write equal to also uh, minus 6 and less than equals to plus 6 right as far as the range is concerned range for this particular function could be written as from 0 to 6 right so, so we'll write it is greater than equal to 6 and that's the y value less than or equal to 6. Now let's look into the absolute functions which we have here. As far as the absolute function is concerned, it is translated one unit up, two units to the right and is also reflected, right? So, so let me sketch this function first and then we'll kind of uh, write its domain and range. So I'm not sketching it perfectly but kind of. So basically what we have here is that uh, if x if I put x equals to 0 then what do I get I get 2 times 3 as minus 3 6 and minus 6 1 minus 6 is minus 5 so at 0 I have a negative value fairly negative right now this is an absolute function which has been translated one unit up and is reflected downwards so and is also translated two units to the right so I could say let's say translate two units to the right that is a vertex reflected down so kind of uh, this function will be like this the important 
thing which we need to see here is that the vertex is is at one, right? So uh, absolute functions, their domain is not restricted at all. So domain is all real numbers. So we could always safely write domain as x belongs to real numbers. And as far as the range is concerned, since it is reflected on x-axis, it is y belongs to real numbers, where y is less than or equal to 1, right? So that is the range of this particular function. Now here we have a reciprocal function which has been translated 3 units to the right, vertically 1 unit up. It has been reflected and stretched also. As far as the domain and, uh, range is concerned, we see that there is a restriction. Denominator cannot be 0, right? So, so x minus 3 cannot be equal to 0. That gives us a restriction on the domain. So x is not equal to 3. So we can write that the domain of this function is x belongs to real numbers. However, x is not equal to 3. As far as the range is concerned, we know this part cannot be 0. It can approach 0. So if this cannot be 0, 1 minus 0 is 1. So we say range y belongs to real numbers, but y is not equal to 1, correct? So that is kind of tricky part. So y is not equal to 1. So that is how we can find domain range of these functions. Now, combining these functions, sometimes we can get a complicated function. So here is a test question for you to practice. So we have a function f of x equals 2 minus square root of, uh, let's say 2 minus 4x, right? And that is a function for you. Find domain range of this function. Now, you can also look into some of my videos to get the right answer for this one. Uh, and I'll also like to like you to sketch this function and then figure it out whether you have the right answer or not. So try to find domain range of this function. Thank you and all the best.